Welcome to another episode of Beautiful, Bad and Bizarre. Today we're at St John's in Hampstead and we're here to bring flowers and visit the grave of the actress Kay Kendall. Oh dear. Well, I'd been married before. It didn't work hard. I suppose I'm an independent type. On the 21st of May 1927, Gladys Kendall gave birth to her third and final baby, Justine K. Kendall McCarthy. Baby Justine would be better known as the actress K. Kendall, and she was born in Withensea on the east coast of Yorkshire. It was rumoured Kay's maternal grandmother was the illegitimate daughter of Edward VII. Years later, Kay would ask friends, Don't you think we look like the royal family? Kay's mother, Gladys, was a chorus girl when she met Kay's father, Terry Kendall McCarthy, who was a dancer. Terry's mother was the famous music hall star, Marie Kendall. Terry and Gladys married in the spring of 1923. Their first son, Terry Jr., was born at the end of 1923 and he was quickly followed by Patricia Kim in 1925 and finally Justine Kay in 1927. Both girls were known by their middle names. The family home was a basement flat in Elgin Avenue, Maida Vale, London. Growing up, Kay loved nothing more than visiting the cinema and the theatre. Both Kim and Kay took ballet lessons and their father gave them lessons in tap dancing. But by the mid-1930s, everything was to change for the young Kay and her siblings as their father began an affair with a new dance partner called Doric. A bitter divorce was to follow, with Gladys refusing to let Terry see the children for quite some while. Terry married Doric and in 1942 the couple had a son who they called Cavan. Cavan was a photographer and an actor with around 40 credits, including appearances in The Railway Children in 1957 and the film Sexy Beast, which was released in 2000. Sadly, this was after Cavan's death in 1999. Back in 1939, with the war on the horizon, parents began to panic, sending their children out of London. As a result, Kay and her sister Kim were sent to Scotland, while their brother Terry joined the Merchant Navy. Kay had always been a vibrant girl who made friends easily. She loved playing pranks and if anyone suggested anything, no matter how silly, Kay was always up for it. As a teenager, Kay was very glamorous and stylish, with no shortage of boys interested in her, which often made her friends jealous. However, despite this, Kay had self-image issues. A friend recalled that she was never satisfied with the way she looked, wishing her hair was longer and admiring Hollywood movie star Hedy Lamarr. She wished that she had a nose like hers. In 1939, Kay had also made her stage debut with her sister Kim in the chorus with the touring company, the George Black Musical Review, Black Velvet. While she was enthusiastic, her dance skills were not up to scratch. However, the choreographer was a friend of her father's, which helped. In 1940, Gladys brought her daughters back to London. Kay loved dressing up and she looked much older than her years and would often visit nightclubs and dances, even though she was underage. Kay Kendall was an optimistic, happy-go-lucky person, but even then it was clear that her health was an issue. Deathly pale, with dark shadows under the eyes and always feeling cold, Kay was diagnosed with anemia. In 1944, Kay made her film debut as an extra in Champagne Charlie, an Ealing Studios production. Further work followed in films such as the comedy Dreaming, also in 1944, 
And in 1945, she was in the film Caesar and Cleopatra with Vivian Lee and Claude Rains. Kay Kendall was spotted and offered a seven-year contract with the Rank Organisation and she became part of the famous Rank Charm School where she underwent further voice and acting training along with deportment and charm. Kay Kendall gained a significant part in the 1946 film London Town and Rank promoted her as Britain's Lana Turner. Now aged 19, Kay thought she'd made it. However, the musical was a flop and the seven-year contract she'd been so excited about became a nightmare as it was clear she was not going to get any further work. She was both relieved and upset when she was released from the contract after an executive allegedly told her, You're very ugly, you have no talent, and you are too tall. Kay was five foot nine. And you photograph horribly. Find some nice man and get married. This played into her self esteem issues, and Kay Kendall said, if I weren't a real pro at heart, London Town would have finished me. But when you're born into show business, you just go on. Kay made the decision to work in Rep, where she toured Europe for two years and despite issues with self-confidence, she did pick up modelling jobs. Kay also took the decision to have plastic surgery on her nose but unfortunately she felt it didn't improve matters and she continued to hate it. In 1950 Kay was given a small role in another low budget Ealing studio production, Dance Hall. The cast included Diana Dawes, Petula Clark and Jane Hilton. Kay Kendall thoroughly enjoyed her time on the movie and soon found herself working again with Diana Dawes in the 1951 film Lady Godiva Rides Again, also known as Bikini Baby. She played the parts of Sylvia Clark and said it was her favourite role and she recalled, I was a cockney tart behind a sweet counter and I adored it. Incidentally, a certain Ruth Ellis also appeared in this film as a beauty contestant. Kay had had numerous ill-advised love affairs, including an affair with the 47-year-old film producer Anthony Havelock Allen, who was at the time married to the actress Valerie Hobson. Anthony helped Kay secure a part in another low-budget movie, this was to change her life. The film was called Genevieve. It was a light-hearted story about two young couples participating in the London to Brighton vintage car rally. He also obtained a divorce from his wife in order to marry Kay, but Kay couldn't go through with it, although she did go through with the film role. Kay Kendall would be working alongside Kenneth Moore, John Gregson and Dinah Sheridan. The film was difficult and exhausting for Kay, who, after two weeks of filming, realised she was pregnant. Kay Kendall had a complicated love life, but she knew the father was James Sainsbury. They had met around 1950 and appeared to be very much in love. However, James did not want to consider marriage which left Kay disappointed. She decided not to continue with the pregnancy and the relationship fizzled to an end. Conditions during the filming of Genevieve were uncomfortable to say the least. All four leading actors were fighting flu. The weather was freezing cold and at one point during a scene Kay collapsed and had to be sent home. When Genevieve was released in May 1953 it was to unexpected rave reviews. The cinemas were packed out and the film going public and the critics loved the movie. Once again Kay was offered a seven-year contract with Rank but this time the contract was very much in her favour. In 1954, Kay had two scenes in the film Doctor in the House, which she thoroughly enjoyed working on. She was also seeing the younger son of Charlie Chaplin, Sidney Chaplin, but as 1954 faded, so did their relationship. 
Kay Kendall's next film was about to change her life again. It was another light comedy called The Constant Husband. Husband was played by Rex Harrison, who it turns out had a liking for wedding cake, playing the part of a serial bigamist, and Kay was to play one of his several wives. Rex Harrison's own love life had been almost as complicated as the character he was playing. In 1934, he had married his first wife and they had a son, but the marriage failed in 1940 when Harrison began an affair with the actress Lily Palmer. Lily and Rex lived together while Rex awaited his divorce, which was rather a scandal in those days. Finally, Rex and Lily married in 1943, and together they had a son. However, Rex Harrison began an affair with the actress Carol Landis, who was also married. This ended in tragedy when Carol ended her own life because Rex would not leave Lily. Rex found Carol and it was rumoured that instead of calling an ambulance, he called the studio PR for advice first. How true this is, we may never know. Either way, Lily stood by her husband. On meeting Kay, Rex fell head over heels in love with her. They dined out together with Kay's mother, who afterwards told her daughter, You know, darling, this man is absolutely madly in love with you. Kay responded, Oh, really, mother, he's 20 years older than I am. He's got a concave chest and he's going bald. The Harrison charm, however, soon got the better of Kay and feelings were reciprocated. When filming ended, Rex went back to his wife while his affair continued with Kay, who he called Kate, as did most of her close friends and family. The constant husband was a box office success and Kay was in demand, with MGM offering a large sum of money to buy Kay Kendall's contract from Rank, but Rank, much to Kay's disgust, refused. Kay soon found herself suspended by Rank for turning down three films. Value for Money, As Long As They're Happy, both taken by Diana Dawes, and Doctor at Sea. Brigitte Bardot filled that gap. Kay had recently filmed Simon and Laura, but there were tensions on set and the finished movie received a mediocre reception in cinemas in 1955. This was to be the last film Kay would make for Rank, who were now regularly loaning her out to other studios. In New York in 1956, Rex Harrison was starring in the stage production of My Fair Lady on Broadway, which was a huge success. Kay flew out to New York to be with him. He rented an apartment and they lived openly together, despite the fact that Rex was still married to Lily Palmer. Around this time, he was sent for a routine health checkup, and Kay went along with him as she'd not been feeling 100% and she had some tests too. Kay was soon to be cast in the 1957 MGM musical Les Girls, with Gene Kelly for the extraordinary fee of a $100,000 bonus over her rank salary. New Year, January 1957, Rex Harrison went alone to receive Kay's test results and was told the horrifying news that she had myelocytic leukaemia and was not expected to survive beyond two years. Rex wrote in his memoirs, I sat my own blood draining, unable to say anything. It was agreed with the doctor that Kay would not be told that she had leukaemia, but instead would be told she had the treatable anemia. The first person Rex did tell was his estranged wife Lily. Although in their memoirs they both have a different version of the story, the outcome was agreed upon. Lily would divorce Rex and Rex would marry Kay. Kay Kendall and Rex Harrison married in New York after she returned from LA, having recently completed Les Girls. The ceremony was a disaster, causing Kay to become near hysterical, 
but a week later they had a second wedding arranged by Rex who recalled that it was great fun and they both enjoyed it enormously. In 1958 the couple had travelled to San Moritz for a break when Kay fell ill. Rex Harrison arranged for her to see a doctor who specialised in new treatments for leukaemia. Together he and the doctor arranged her treatment telling Kay it was for anemia. The treatment was successful and Kay made a good recovery. Soon she was back on the ski slopes and tobogganing when unfortunately she had an accident which resulted in a hairline fracture of her pelvis. With rest and medication, Kay made a slow recovery. Rex Harrison and Kay Kendall were due to film together that year, which they both had been very much looking forward to. The film was The Reluctant Debutante. Seemingly recovered from her injury and illness, no one on set realised that Kay was slowly dying. Both she and Rex thoroughly enjoyed making the film, even though she was battling with occasional bouts of fever and weakness. In the spring of 1958, the couple moved into a house in Chelsea, London. That summer, the medication was no longer having the same effect, and Kay told her close friend, Dirk Bogard, Diggy, I think I'm dying. I've got a terrible disease and they won't tell me. I think I've got cancer. Her friend did his best to calm her worries without revealing the obvious truth. Dirk Bogard said of the time, We all knew, Kate knew she was dying. Despite being so ill, Kay Kendall continued to work and in 1959 she flew to France to make the movie Once More With Feeling for Columbia Pictures in May. Somehow, Kay Kendall completed filming and by the end of August, she was taken to a London clinic, followed by a pack of reporters. She snapped at them. If you think I'm coming here to die, you're wrong. I'm not sick and I'm not dying. On the night of the 5th of September, Kay Kendall asked Rex Harrison, you would tell me if I was dying? To which her husband replied, you're not dying. Sadly, on the afternoon of Sunday the 6th of September 1959, at 12.30pm, after slipping into a coma, Kay Kendall passed away, aged just 32 years old. She had been a vivacious, elegant and sophisticated actress whose death cut short a career of considerable achievement and even greater promise. Kay's death came as a shock to her family, some of whom never forgave Rex Harrison for not telling them. James Sainsbury, Kay's former lover, never married and when he died in 1984 he left the bulk of his £18 million estate to set up a leukaemia research and treatment fund in Kay's name. Kay Kendall was buried here at St John's Churchyard, Hampstead, on September the 9th, 1959, with a small congregation of mourners, including Noel Coward and Vivian Lee. Memorial services took place both in America and in England, with Vivian Lee giving the reading at the British Memorial Service on the 22nd of September, 1959. She said, No one was ever born into the world with such a bright genius for living. It was almost as if she had a premonition that the gift of life would not be hers for very long. With such intensity and gaiety did she take every minute of her stay on earth. So here we are at Kay Kendall's final resting place. Her headstone reads, Kay Kendall Harrison, born the 21st of May 1927, died the 6th of September 1959. Kate, deeply loved wife of Rex. Kay's brother, Cavan Kendall McCarthy, passed away in 1999 at the age of 57 and he now rests here with his sister. Thank you so much for joining me in this step back in time. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.